What's good, people? It's about that time to randomly relate, reverse rants, and don't hate. Man, today I want to talk about a fighter that was overlooked for the longest, man. I feel like he's... I don't really want to say he's underrated. But at the same time, I feel like he was definitely overlooked. And, like, people... He, he's underrated in, in a particular way. Guy name is Buck Smith, right? Guy was born in 1965 from Oklahoma. And listen to his record, right? The guy, basically, his total fights was 226. 226 total fights. He had 179 wins, 120 wins by KO, 20 losses, 2 draws, and 25 no contests. Now, I don't see him as an all-time great. I've seen him fight before. Um, I remember him fighting Kevin Pompey. Kevin Pompey is one of the fighters I really like who is not an all-time great fighter. And I remember he was ranked number four. Buck Smith was ranked number five. And Buck Smith, if he would have won that fight, maybe he just goes to number three. Maybe he gets a title shot. I don't know. But um, I remember in that fight, and I was rooting for Kevin Pompey. You know, but 11th round, he had Kevin Pompey hurt. Caught him with a shot, had him on the ropes. He's throwing a lot of shots. And Kevin Pompey was just covering up, couldn't really do anything. The referee stopped the action because Kevin Pompey had tape that was flapping from his wrist and they go and wrap it back. And 12th round comes, and that was, you know, basically Buck Smith couldn't do the same thing. So. We don't know what would have happened. Would he finish him? I don't know. Would the ref have actually stepped in and said enough? He didn't. Um, but I was rooting for Kevin Pompey. But um, this guy has had, you know, the thing is he lost his high-profile fights. Now, his high-profile fights was, the, was against Buddy McGirt, Mark Breland, Julio Cesar Chavez, and Antonio Margarito. Now, I've never been impressed with Antonio Margarito. He was high-volume punches. Constant pressure. Um, the guy had sloppy, slow feet. Um, no real, no real rhyme or reason other than just pressure, pressure, pressure. He had no traps to set, no real technique. I've never been impressed by Margarito, but it is what it is. We've seen Paul Williams fight him. We know that Paul Williams was high volume, and Paul Williams was a fighter. I said when he can no longer throw a hundred punches around, he's going to be in trouble. The same with Margarito. Because they're both very easy to hit. And basically, um, when your best defense is, is your offense, and you can no longer do those same things, I mean, what else do you have to resort to? Now, he did beat a guy named Kirkland Lang, who actually beat Roberto Duran. Um, you know, he, he, he knocked, he, he beat him, um, you know. Robert Wangler, Wang, Wang, Wang Gila, he beat that guy, you know, um, that got him a feature in Ring Magazine, but at the same time, now mind you, now listen at this, this guy was 96 wins, two losses, and one draw with 70 KOs, and at that point, he was ranked number 13, okay, by the WBC, he was a welterweight, now, imagine being ranked that high. And you're only ranked number 13, right? I mean, with that with that many wins, and you're only ranked number 13. Now, we've seen a lot of fighters who a lot of us feel like didn't deserve title shots, but they got them. Chris Algieri, his biggest win was against Provodnikov before he fought um, um, Manny Pacquiao. Provodnikov is like a measuring stick type guy for his division. Um, I've never seen Provodnikov is like he's a he was. He fought hard. He came to bring the fight. He took a lot of punishment. Um, providing the cough is not an all-time great as well. Um, we've heard many people, many boxing historians, say things like, there's many fighters from back in the days that were spectacular, phenomenal, great fighters that were never world champions. So having a belt doesn't make you a world champion. And usually... Uh, you know, doesn't make you an all-time great. And that's kind of that's the kind of talk that they usually say when they're trying to discredit someone who's getting praised now. Um, also, 
this guy went all the way up to cruiserweight, and his last fight was in 2009. His first fight was in 2000. This was on 1987, and the guy was awarded fifty dollars for that. Now, what makes his story so unique to me? He has no amateur pedigree at all. His very first fight was a professional boxing match, and the guy only had got fifty dollars for that fight. He's from Oklahoma, you know, and he 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 basically learned on the job. He had 90 fights in a three-month span. Now, this guy was fighting so much because he was gaining experience in the ring. He never had training camps, only his high-profile fights he had training camps for. He didn't have regular training camps, um, so getting sparring partners and being able to, you know, train like he was supposed to and get the experience that he needed, he didn't have that. If he had that, he probably wouldn't have been a much better fighter than what he was. Um, the guy fought hard, man. He, You know, what he remind me of is one of those teams, those football teams, that that in their career, that their record is different because he, he had a lot of wins, way more wins than he did um, losses. But he remind me of that team that's like 4-12, and 12, right? Their record is not impressive to people, but you look at them and go, damn. But every single game that they lost – was a dog fight. They never got blown out and they have four wins against solid playoff teams. Okay, maybe not the very best of the best, but playoff teams. And then they 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 are impressive and people are watching them because even the very best teams barely beat them. That's what he reminds me of somewhat, you know. Now let me give you his record again. 226 total fights, 179 wins, 120 by KO, 20 losses, 2 draws, and 25 no contest. Now, there's other fighters who I'm going to do a video on. Not now. I'm not going to mention them, but off top, the first three people I think of when you hear that is Ray Robinson, uh, uh, um, um, Archie Moore, and Willie Pep. Now, one thing I will say. A lot of times people exaggerate. Like out of all of Ray Robinson's wins, Pep, more. Do you think that half those, not even just half of those fights, do you think they were all against world-class, uh, 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 um, you know, top of the line? The No. No. That's why I ask people, give me five fighters, and, I'm, and this is not to discredit them. This is for the people who like to make claims just by repeating what they're told. Give me five fighters without digging into their history offhand that you can think of that they fought that was this guy was an all-time great. It's one thing to have a record of 60 wins, 50, 40 wins, and have five great opponents that those were wars or these were the fights that, you know, to find that person. But when you have that many fights, 100 plus fights, and... You have maybe five fights, three fights at least, with top of the line guys, with, with all time great guys. It still it stands for something. You don't dismiss it. But what I'm saying is, a lot of times people are delusional, man. They 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 try to make it like these guys are superhuman, superhuman strength, superhuman speed. They did something that, that a human couldn't do, which is bullshit. We know that because if humans couldn't do it, then they wouldn't be able to do it. So the proper term would be rare. But for these guys, and it's not to discredit anything that they did, but I've heard commentators say things like, we'll never see those kind of records like an Archie Moore or like a Sugar Ray Robinson or Willie Pep. And while they were saying that that stuff just doesn't happen anymore, this guy was already doing that. You know, Duran has had over 100 fights. Chavez has had over 100 fights. And, you know, we know when you think of Duran, automatically who comes to mind as far as his great opponents was if you and and let's look at duran duran has some 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 solid wins but he lost to hearns got knocked out in the second round he lost to marvin Hagler, which it was a, a tough fight he got you know beat by Rand barkley you know um he beat leonard leonard beat him twice um he fought uh um um, Alfredo, Alfredo Benitez. I mean, he has some names that he beat. His best work was probably at lightweight. 
But overall, the point is just the opponents that he faced. He didn't beat all of them. He lost, is what I'm pointing to them all time greats. He lost the majority. He lost to these guys. But we still consider Duran a great fighter. You know, guys like Arturo Gotti, Mickey Ward, Zab Judah, there's certain guys when you think about them, their names don't come up as all time greats. Zab Judah's a four time world champion. And we don't bring his name up when we talk about all time great world to weights. And even Shane Moldy, um, he's a Hall of Famer, but when we talk about all time great pound for pound, nobody talks about Shane Mosley. So when you I mean you talk about De La Hoya more than you talk about Shane, and Shane beat him twice. Certain fighters, you only talk about them when it when the person across from them is being mentioned. Like if you talk about Antonio Tarva, why are you talking about him? You're talking about Roy. You understand what I'm saying? If you talk about um, um, Ken Norton, you're either talking about Muhammad Ali for the most part, because other than that, I remember him getting knocked out by George Foreman. I remember him getting knocked out in the first round by Ernie Shavers. You know, I remember him losing to Larry Holmes. So we talk about high profile fights. And like I said, many people will tell you, oh, there's been many guys who are great, fantastic fighters that were never champions. You know, I think Salvador Sanchez was a solid champion. But how many times do we talk about Salvador Sanchez? You know what I mean? How many times do we talk about Joe Calzaghe or Collins? You know, how many times do we talk about Nigel Benn or, or, or you know, or, um, you know, there's, there's several fighters, man, that, that we don't talk about that I feel like they're all-time greats. You know, Chris Eubanks, you know, senior, not junior. But there's times that we, 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 it's like people are told who's great and who's not, who you should or shouldn't like. You know, Kevin Pompey is a guy who I really like as a fighter. No, he's not an all-time great, but he was a solid fighter. You know, Prince Charles Williams, he's another guy that I really like as a fighter. All-time great? No, but he was a solid fighter. You know, um, this is a guy that started out as welterweight and went all the way up. Of course, by the time he was a cruiserweight, he was past his prime. Um, and we've seen Thomas Hearns go up to cruiserweight. You know, his best work was at welterweight, you know, but if you, if you're going to give people credit for their records, just for their record alone, just for people to say, look, Archie Moore had over a hundred fights, you know, Duran, it's an accomplishment. Do you think when Duran, when Duran, by the, look, Duran, I remember him fighting Hector Camacho, okay, Duran was well past his prime, but he wanted to reach the hundred fight mark, you know, James Tony had an impressive record, there's a lot of other guys. What I'm saying is why this guy, he was completely overlooked. Why didn't he get that nod? His story, like I said, his story alone, a guy with no amateur experience. Deontay Wilder has limited amateur experience, but he went into the pro ranks with something. You know what I'm saying? He's not like he just came off the street and jumped in the, in the, in the ring like this guy. You know, this guy, there's a lot of fighters that don't have um, extensive amateur backgrounds. But this guy had nothing at all. His very first pro fight was him coming, you know, whatever kind of training, the shadow boxing or whatever, whatever he was doing was on his own terms. Like I said, the guy didn't even have training camps, only in his high profile fights. He didn't even have full training camps. So that's like you take a guy who goes in his backyard and maybe he, he put a mattress up against a tree. He's punching the mattress. You know, he's, I hear his story when he's talking about, you know, um, Going back and forth, you know, traveling, sleeping in his Honda Civic, you know, for fights because you can't afford a hotel, you know, can't afford training camps, you know, the guy's work rate, you can't deny it. The guy fought 90 times in three months, you know, and like I said, you know, to be 96 and two with one draw, 96 wins, two losses and one draw, and you are ranked number 13, but again, like I said, Certain fighters have been awarded. Look at, look at, look at, not just look, Chris Algieri. You know, I who who knew who Chris Algieri was? When Pac, when Pacquiao chose him as an opponent, I'm like, what? And people, oh, that guy's tall, he got long reach. These are the same guys, man, that 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 try to knock Diego Corrales as a, as a, as, a, as an opponent. These are the same guys who, who who knock other fighters as cherry pickers, you know, but they tried to pump Chris Algieri up. And 
if you watch him fight and seen Pacquiao fight, you knew Pacquiao gonna beat the shit out of this guy. I don't care how tall he is. He's not as good, he's, he's not good enough. He's not ready. And it's the same guy that fought Amir Khan, who most people, including myself, thought that he won that fight against Amir Khan. And Amir Khan is a guy who I feel like he's a good fighter. Not to take anything, but I don't see him the way other people do. And regardless, it's the type of thing where Chris Algieri didn't have that many fights by the time he got to Pacquiao. You know, we didn't even know anything about this guy. So beating Provodnikov to me wasn't like, oh my God, I can't believe he beat Provodnikov. Provodnikov was a C-class fighter to me. I don't see him as, as anything really special. He's kind of one of those measuring stick guys. Um, that's about it. Look at Marvis Frazier, for example. Marvis Frazier only had 10 fights when he fought Larry Holmes. He had no business being in there with Larry Holmes. I mean, at 10 professional fights, if he was one of those guys who had like a Canelo type, you know, um, amateur pedigree, then it's at least you know, okay, well, yeah, this guy, he got a lot of experience. But this guy, he, he didn't belong in there with, with Holmes, man. So even in Holmes winning that fight, he didn't really do anything for Holmes. You know, when he fought Mike, he shouldn't have been in with Mike Tyson either. But at least by then, he had more fights. He just wasn't good enough. But at the same time, Mike was up and coming. So that was different. But the point is, you, you who really gave him a chance? Like, no. This guy is completely overlooked, man. I mean, if you go through, like, look at guys, like I said, like Mickey Ward and Arturo Gotti. They were hard fighters. They came to fight. They came to fight. But... When you see guys that go in there and take beatings and they're always in like a bloodbath type fight that, you know, people go crazy for that. Um, but for someone who understands boxing and realizes that you're just basically going in to be a punching bag, it makes me think, what do you, how do you train? Do you train to stand in and get busted up? Is that, is that part of your plan? I'm going to let him cut my face up and swell me up and all. This was a guy who fought hard. He came to fight. The guy had some talent. Do I see him as an all-time great? No, absolutely not. And I'm not saying that he should be. I'm saying his record alone should get respect. Him as a fighter should get respect. His story alone. The guy was learning on the job. He was fighting fight after fight after fight to gain the experience instead of sitting back because the guy couldn't afford training camps. So he's learning on the job. Now, you don't need... A ring to shadow box you can find something to punch you know i don't know what kind of setup he had overall like like i said people some people have setups in their garages or certain places but when you're on the road where you where are you using as a training camp you understand what i'm saying so the, the, the guy had to he had to use what he had and this is why i said he probably would have been much better if he would have than he was if he would have been able be, been able to have these training camps so only in his in his high profile fights been to have a training camp and for this guy to have the, the kind of wins that he had, um, to have the record that he had, um, I think that his efforts was was like, I don't feel like his efforts should be overlooked. I'm, I'm trying to get this guy props for what he did. Like I said, I'm not stupid. Archie Moore, great fighter. Um, you know, Ray Robinson, Willie Pep, great fighters. Okay, but I'm no fool. You guys can sit back and listen to the superhuman stories all you want and believe that these guys fought nothing but, but killers. No. No. They had some notable wins. They had some fights with guys that were great fighters at the time that stood out. And they won some, they lost some, okay? But at the same time, no. Okay? If you want to believe that somebody had 180, 100-something wins and every fight was or even half of them, well, it was, was with just... You know, world class killers. No, no, that that wasn't the case. Um, and just the record alone, I've heard people say about Ray Robinson. Just the the record alone, regardless to how good or, or, or the the fighter was or wasn't, the the fact that the the work rate. So this is my point. When you guys are saying this, and you're saying you're not going to see anybody with those kind of records again, well, when you're saying that this guy Buck Smith was doing it, but was being overlooked. You know, um, when you look at Roberto Duran's career, because it's Roberto Duran, people will go, man, do you see how many wins this guy got? Do you see the? Do you see how many fights he had? That's unheard of. Fighters don't fight like that anymore. And here's the guy that did it all up until 2009. So when you look at that and you realize, like, yeah, well, people were saying this. Now, the same, the same way 
when people say, yeah, but Ray Robinson, most of his losses came after he was older. Hey, listen, every fighter's career has a different path and a different outcome. For this guy to have these amount of fights and not get the recognition, I think is a is a is a is a a disservice to him and to boxing because the guy was in there, and the fact that his highest ranking was number five by the WBC is a welterweight. That was his best weight, and not a cruiserweight, but he went all the way up to cruiserweight. So, fighting past your prime, no, it's not something we, you know that you really want to see. But the guy was fighting to make money. And can you imagine for a guy to fight that many times from the 80s all the way to the 2000s and not be a millionaire, multi-millionaire? Like, you know, no, he wasn't getting that kind of money. He wasn't getting that kind of money. So basically, he was trying to survive, you know, through boxing. But at the same time, the guy was fighting his butt off and trying to work his way up to be that world champion, to get himself in that position, you know, and for people to just overlook this guy and never talk to him, if you say the name Buck Smith to most people, they don't even know what the hell you're talking about. You can go to fighters and say, yo, what you think about Buck Smith? Who the hell is Buck Smith? They don't even know who you're talking about, you know what I mean? And so, yeah, it's like, we feel like anytime we salute somebody um, for having an extensive, you know, win, loss record or whatever. It has to be somebody from, you know, the black and white uh, TV era days. It's like, no. No, it's not just those guys, man. Um, and I tell when I, so when you hear me say name five guys offhand, like if you ask me about Ali, I'll say Shavers, Larry Holm, um, uh, 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 um, um, Ken Norton, you know, uh, um, 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 George Foreman, you know, uh, Sonny Liston. You know what I'm saying? Joe Frazier. You ask about Ray Leonard, you're going to say Hagler, Duran, Benitez. You, understand? you get the point what I'm saying as great fighters, all-time great fighters, like offhand. So, like I said, now older people will remember more of Archie Moore and Bully Pep or, you know, things that they did, like offhand, more notably. But even them, even the older people, same thing. They got to, well, and I know because I have these conversations. And they, well, they fought some great, no, I hear you saying they fought great fighters. That's not what I'm asking you. I'm saying name five world-class, all-time great fighters that they fought. Just name five. Now, if you compare that and look at the records that people have, it's just like, for example, um, people knock Anthony Joshua for going after, for fighting Joseph Parker. And I said, why would he not go after Joseph Parker? Parker had a belt. And he wanted to be a champion. He wanted to unify. Why would he not fight Charles Martin? Charles Martin had a title at the time. He had the IBF title. Why would he not? Then you say he's ducking such and such. So wait, you go after a champion, but you're ducking a guy who has no title. Okay, no, let me go collect these belts. Then I'll come back and kick his ass after I get these belts over here. And then, you know, it's like what I'm saying. You, you take these guys, and it's like if they come from... The back in the day era, oh, you automatically got to get them props. And it's like, okay, but Buck Smith is back in the day, not as far back as Archie Moore or Ray Robinson or Willie Pep. No, he didn't come from that era. So what? That doesn't mean anything. Neither did Roberto Durant. But we marvel about his record. We marvel about James Tony's record. You know what I'm saying? But you take a guy like him who, no, and again, like I said, he did not win his high-profile fights. He has some notable wins, you know, as he has a few. But the guys that would have put him to that next level to, you know, get the title shots and to, to be able to say that he beat these guys, you know, the Buddy McGirts, the Mark Breelands, the Chavez's, the Antonio Margaritas, the fact that he was even in there with these guys. If you don't see him as that good of a fighter, why was he even in there with them? I mean, if we go through Rod, Rod, Roger Mayweather's career, people say that Roger Mayweather, they consider him a great fighter, right? And not to, and, and not to take take anything away from him, but look at his record, his win loss record. Look at look at look at his notable wins versus his losses. You understand what I'm saying? Um, Chris Algieri, people consider him a solid fighter. And watching both of them fight, if Buck Smith versus Chris Algieri, from what I've seen, I would go with Buck Smith to beat Chris Algieri. Now we'll never know. 
But personally, I feel like he would have beat Chris Algieri. Um, there's certain fight. I mean, look at Timothy Bradley. Look at that. And then, you know, who did Timothy Bradley beat? Timothy Bradley lost three times, as far as I'm concerned, to to to, to, to Manny Pacquiao. You know, he beat Providing the Cough and got his face all swollen up and was, you know, I mean, he took beatings. He 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 he, he was a he was a guy that came to fight. Um, if you watch. Buck Smith, he kind of fights like Timothy Bradley in a way. Or say Timothy Bradley fights like him in a, in a way. They they both come, you bring that heat, they come with pressure, they come with but it's like, you know, if you look at Timothy Bradley's career, who was his notable wins against? So you can't, you know, like to me, I don't see Timothy Bradley as an all-time great. I don't see Buck Smith as an all-time great. That doesn't mean you're not a great fighter. It's just a certain level elite fighters that you haven't got to that level yet. Or you haven't got to it, period. But at the same time, you know, we give Timothy Bradley his props. And I'm not trying to take props from anybody. Now, for fighters who I don't see as being the fighter that people try to make them to be, it is what it is. But what I'm getting at overall is that these guys that we praise... And, oh, this guy was this, he was that, and look, just the record alone, to have that many fights, this is what I'm saying. And here's a guy who's learning on the job. And even to not be an all-time great, you still was in the ring with Buddy McGirt, Mark Breland, Julio Cesar Chavez, and Antonio Margarito. You still shared the ring with those guys. So at the same time, it's like, yeah, you were given opportunities, but... I believe his opportunities came at him being a cherry pick because his highest ranking was five, was fifth and then 13th. That was his two highest rankings. So, so how is it that you were in the ring with these guys, but you're not even seen as being a great fighter? So he was a cherry pick. So again, I don't see him as an all-time great, and that's not what I'm speaking about. This video is not about him being an all-time great, but I am giving him his props, man, for winning the amount of fights he's won, having the amount of fights he's had with his story alone with the guy basically just coming with limited experience. He had no experience. You jump in a professional boxing ring with no experience, and to accomplish what he did, I mean, that surpasses, like, look at Kimbo Slice, for example, you know, Kimbo Slice was a street fighter, man. And this guy can say he finished he finished his career. Um, I mean, of course, we know he passed away, but this was a guy who came in with no with no ex professional fighting experience in either sport. And the guy came into MMA, then went into boxing and actually won some fights. So, no, do I expect anybody to consider Kimbo Slice an all-time great in either sport? No. No. But we, you know, we, we, we give Kimbo Slice his props for doing what Buck Smith did. A guy with no experience that just came in and look at the amount of fights that this guy had. Look at the record. Let me read it to you again. 226 total fights, 179 wins, 120 by KO, 120 losses. I mean, uh, um, 120 knockouts, two, 20, 20 losses, two draws, and 25 no contests. Okay. I'm just saying, let's be be real, man. Be real. That is an impressive record, man. Now, the 25 no contest is kind of like, what the hell? Yeah, because that got my attention when I first, you know, you know, that was brought to my attention. But it's like, okay, but regardless, overall, just to have that many fights, and he made a career, made a living off boxing by learning fight after fight. He didn't have the preparation that he needed to go to these fights, man. You know, um, I think the guy did something special. And that's what I wanted to point out and get his guy his props for doing what he did. You know, I'm going to go through some more fighters and what they accomplished. And, you know, we, we, we accomplishments that we don't pay attention to or overlook. This is a video I was going to do about two months ago. And when I first was going to do it, things was happening. I was talking about other things. And I just said, you know what? So now I feel like, you know what? Let me do it. And I did it. So Buck Smith, you know, props to him for doing something that's unheard of, man. A guy with no boxing experience 
It's like one of those movies. Hey, kid, you want to you want to fight? Want to make some money? And just throw him in there. I mean, the guy had no boxing experience, and literally had to learn as he went, and that's what he did. And I feel like he, he held his own. He did very well for himself with what he had to work with. So anyway, that's all I'm going to say in this video. We'll catch y'all on the next one.